Hi everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. This is going to be more of a current events video. ICOM just recently announced firmware updates for the IC705, the IC7300, and the IC9700. As I'm recording this on February 1st, 2021, the updates aren't available yet for the 7300 or for the 9700. The new firmware for the IC705 was released on January 22nd. So we'll install that update and take a look at the new features. One key feature that they highlight is a mode preset for FT8 operation, but actually the feature is much more than that. It's five preset memories that let you quickly save and recall a whole bunch of radio parameters for different setups that you may want to use. So let's get started and take a look. Assuming you've had your radio for any length of time, you're going to want to save your settings before you update the firmware. So let's take a look at how we do that. We're going to press the menu button and we're going to go to set and then we need to scroll down to page three of three and we're going to select SD card. I have an SD card in at the moment and you have a number of choices here on the SD card and we actually want the one on the first page. We have load setting and save setting. So we're going to do save setting. This will save all the radio settings. I have a number of them already saved there. I'm going to say new file to make a new save uh, file for this. And when you say new file, by default, the radio automatically creates a file name with today's date, with year, month, day, and then... 01. If I did a second one on the same day, it would be 02 and so forth. I'm going to just leave that setting because I'm fine with the uh, predefined name. So I'm going to press enter and then it says save file and I'm going to say yes. And now it's saving all the memories, all the settings, everything that I've got programmed into the radio. So there we go. We've got that saved before we go and do our firmware update. On the left side of the screen, I have my SD card, my micro SD card, and I'm in the IC705 folder that gets created on that card. On the right side of the screen, I have my download directory and the folder where I extracted the new firmware update. The one thing that I don't think was covered in the other firmware instructions if you have already updated the firmware on the 705 at one point, that .dat file that you put on the micro SD card is still there. The radio does not delete that file after it does the update. And it doesn't say anything about this in the manual, but I'm going to recommend that you delete the old firmware update. So I'm going to do that right now. So we're going to delete that off the micro SD card before we copy this new one in. So I'm going to put the new file in there and now we should be good to go to put the micro SD card back in and update to the 120 firmware release. Well I've just updated the firmware with the micro SD card with the new version and the radio has restarted. Now actually I'm going to turn it off and we're going to look in the lower right here to see if it's updated. If this has worked correctly it should say 1.20 for the new firmware version. So we're going to look down here and it's 1.20 so that's a good sign. Now let's see if we can get our settings back that we saved before. So we're going to press menu we're going to go to set and then we're going to scroll down to the SD card menu and we're going to say load setting and I'm 
Oh, I guess that's all the files. Oh, it's right here on the bottom. I'm going to load the file that I just saved, which is 2021, January 31st, 01. And I'm going to load everything. Keep, skip settings. Yeah, that's fine. In the new reference adjust setting will be saved, which is fine because I didn't touch that and it should have been saved as what it was before. So this should load all of my settings. Okay, it says it's completed, so we will restart the radio. And let's see, it's remembered my call sign, so that's a good sign. And we're back on the frequency that I was on before, instead of 14.100, which is the factory default frequency when the radio gets factory reset. So... It looks like we have our new settings, and let's just see here, my, I only had a few memory channels, but uh, looks like those got saved, so we'll go back to VFO mode. So, we have the new settings loaded, and the new firmware loaded. So to go along with this new version, ICOM did not release new versions of the manuals, either the basic or the advanced for the radio. What they did instead is there is a separate file called firmware update information. There'll be links in the description for that. And this is about a 12 page document that's just a piece of the manual. So it shows you what things have changed. There's some changes to the scope. There's a new scroll mode for operating the scope. There is the preset that we talked about that is, uh, they're calling it the FT8 preset, but as I said, it covers presets for quite a few different possibilities. There's five memories in total, and they go through that. There's a section on the antenna tuner which is not yet available. It's been announced, but it's not out yet. So there's some sections in here that cover using that, and it looks like apparently you can actually update the antenna tuners firmware through the radio. So there's some instructions for that as well. Uh, push to talk tune function, again, that's specific to the uh, antenna tuner. There's some changes to the wireless LAN features, and there is an access point mode now where the radio can operate as an access point. So if you're operating portable out in the middle of the woods somewhere or at a park or someplace where you don't have your home Wi-Fi and you may not have a router, you can connect a PC or a mobile device or a variety of things to the radio's Wi-Fi without having a separate router or without being connected to the internet. In fact, they specifically tell you you can't connect to the internet through this. So there's instructions for that. There are some nice functions here for customizing a couple keys on the front panel. One of the compromises that they had to make with the 705 compared to a larger radio like the 7300 is there's just not enough room to have very many fixed actual buttons. So everything is touchscreen. And it looks like they've added the ability to change the function of a couple of the buttons on the front panel. So if you have a, a particular function that you use all the time and you'd like to have it be on an actual button instead of a touchscreen, they give you a way to do that. So that's kind of nice. The remote mic, there's a couple of new functions that you can do with the buttons on the microphone. Uh, there's some other stuff here about the tuner. And you've got some additional latitude longitude units. And then they go and tell you what the uh, CIV commands are that have changed. 
along with this. And there's a couple of minor changes to the way the battery pack works and the battery screens. So that's all contained in this 12-page document. We're going to cover some of these different functions in detail on the radio in an upcoming video, but let's take a look at that preset mode at least uh, real quick before we finish this one up. Let's take a look at this preset function and preset memories that this new firmware provides. So you get to it from the menu button. So we'll press menu and it's on the second page of the menu and you can see it on the lower right here preset and it's got a little FT8 logo or symbol in the middle of it so it's kinda geared towards that I guess so if we press the preset this is the way it comes with the firmware update. I haven't changed any of these things yet. So there are two presets that are preloaded. One is called normal. Number two is called FT8. And then you have three and four are blank. And if we go down to the next page, there's a fifth one. So you've got a total of five of these memories that you can set up with different kinds of setups depending on how you use your radio. So let's press and hold normal and we can save to the preset memory we can edit it and then you can set it back to the default so I'm gonna edit it and of course you can change the name to whatever is meaningful for you and then here are the things that you can change so you can change the mode and you'll notice a little checkbox on the left the checkbox says that the preset will or won't set that function so and as you can see here along with the mode the filters uh, if you if you don't set the mode you can't set the filters for a particular mode so these are turned on and they have it set to SSB which means the rig will go to sideband and it will go to whatever sideband is appropriate for whatever band you're on. So let's see how that changes. If we go in here, your choices are single sideband, where we're at now. Lower sideband, if you pick this choice with the preset, it'll put the rig in lower sideband no matter what frequency you go to. And there's uh, LSB-D, which is lower sideband data. Upper sideband, and again, that'll keep it in upper sideband. Upper sideband data, CW, CW reverse, RIDI, basically all of the modes that you can access from the mode setting, you know, and this is digital voice and wide FM, FM data, and so forth. So any mode that you can get, you can pre select in here, and then when you pick that preset, the rig will go into that mode. Then if you do pick the mode then you can change the filter that you want it to go to by default this one is set to two the filter bandwidth that you can actually go in and adjust the filter bandwidth so you can have that preset to something other than the normal filter type soft or sharp for HF and then you also have it separately for uh, six meters so there's you can remember them separately the USB, which is universal serial bus, not to be confused with upper sideband, uh, what's the output, and that's AF or IF. So these are menu set functions that you can have preset. The output level, 50%, is the default. And where this is useful is if you have maybe a couple different setups, maybe you use the 705 with the laptop when you're out backpacking with it and maybe you use it with a desktop computer at home and maybe the output levels that you've set up for your digital software are slightly different between the two computers with this you can save the output level specifically for each computer so you might change one of those presets to be called laptop and one called desktop or whatever so that's a really handy feature you can set the squelch, whether it's on or off for the audio frequency output. 
IF output level if you're using that. We'll talk about that in another episode. Um, USB modulation level. Again, this is the modulation level coming from the computer to the rig. And again, you could have this maybe preset differently for a couple different computers or a couple different setups. Data modulation. And this, it's in this case, it's set to USB. So this allows you to set it to be microphone, mic, and USB, wireless LAN. I think those are the only choices because there's no accessory connector on this radio. You can change the transmit bandwidth for SSB data. So you can have it be, you know, whatever makes sense for how you want to have it set up. Data off modulation. So this is where's the modulation source if you're not in data mode. And they've got the default again here is mic and USB. So you might want to change that one just to mic for normal setup. If you had your computer connected and the microphone and you didn't want to accidentally get beeps from the computer while you were uh, talking on the mic, the compressor can be turned on or off. Sideband transmit bandwidth, wide, medium, or narrow. The transmit bandwidth, you can actually set the specific bandwidth once you've picked wide, medium, or narrow. USB send, and this is whether it's sending, um, if, if you want to use the uh, USB send function, that allows you to do frequency shift keying through the USB port. Again, we'll cover that in detail. Another one, USB keying for a RIDI or CW. Um, and then you can actually preset the radio's CIV address. So, for example, WSJT-X uh, does not yet have the 705 as a choice in the radio list. So you could pick, for example, the 7300, which the commands are very similar to this radio, but the 7300 has a different CIV address, so you can set that to be the 7300's address, and then this would work with WSJT. Uh, CIV transceive, you can turn that on and off, and you can turn echo, uh, USB echo, to echo the characters back over the port on or off. So those are all the settings that you can change. These settings are the same on every one of the memories, and then you can um, change them. And you'll notice there's the little checkbox next to all of them, and again, if you don't check it, then when you pick this preset, it won't change that parameter. So if I uncheck this, it won't change uh, where data modulation comes from when I pick the preset. It'll leave it to whatever was set in the radio. If I check it, then it'll change it to what the preset has listed. So pretty cool. We'll take a look real quickly. On, well, sure, we'll load it. So when I load it, you'll notice it says in use. So it's now loaded this preset into the radio. And actually, if I press and hold it, uh, I didn't think it would let me. Yeah, OK. If I try to edit it, it will not let you edit it while it's loaded. So we need to unload the preset. And if I say yes, it puts the radio back to whatever condition it was before you loaded it. So now let's edit this one, and we'll just quickly look at what they have in the default FT8 one. So we'll edit it. So mode, you'll notice they have mode set to USB data. And that's because for FT8, it's upper sideband. No matter what band you're on, it's upper sideband. So this will force the radio to be upper sideband and data, uh, again, no matter what frequency. And then the filter, they have it set to filter one. They have, whoops, went down too far, sorry. They have the filter bandwidth set to 3.6K, which is, and that's, that's as wide as you can make it. And that's in keeping with the WSJT manual. They suggest that you make the filter for receive as wide as you can. They have the edges of the filter set to soft. Same on six meters. USB output select is set to audio frequency, which makes sense. 
Now they have it set to 50%. So again, when you're adjusting this for your computer, you may want to adjust that and then you can resave that in the FT8 preset. They have the squelch off, so it's always open. Output level doesn't matter for IF because we're set to AF. Modulation level, again, you can tweak this for your particular computer setup. Data modulation, they have set to USB. So when you're in data mode, which this preset is in data mode, it's going to get the modulation going to the radio from the USB port. The transmit bandwidth, they have it set from 100 to 2900, so that's as wide as you can go. So they have it set all the way wide. Data off modulation, they're not doing anything with that, so it doesn't touch data off because you're basically in data mode. Compressor, they're not touching that. The sideband bandwidth, transmit bandwidth for non-data, they're not touching. USB send, keying, and so on, all of those they have, they're not touching. CIV address, they have that one checked, so it will set it, but right now they have it set to what the IC705 default address is, and they're setting the echo back and turning that off. So that's the preset that they have already in here for FT8, and that's pretty much what you would need for working with connecting to a computer over the USB port. Those settings are pretty close. The only ones you might want to tweak is the CIV address and the audio input and output levels to adjust them for your particular computer. So there you have it. That's the, the preset function uh, or functions in a nutshell. Again, you got five memories, so you might uh, have this. If Maybe you have a different microphone that you're using, and you might have a different setup so you can adjust the the gain for the mic or you might tweak your bandwidth for different things you might have one for contesting there's all kinds of things you could do but this is really cool that you can preset all of those different settings with just the touch of one button in the memory here and then when you unload it it puts the radio back the way it was so that's it in a nutshell. In other upcoming videos, we'll go through some of those specific ones in a little more detail as we actually set the radio up for some of those operations. This is one thing that I really like about a software-based radio. You can take advantage of updates and new features without having to buy a new radio. I hope that ICOM will continue to release new firmware updates over time. That's all we're going to cover this time. You'll find links in the description for all of the various items mentioned in this video. You'll also find a link for a to z.tech. That's the companion website for this channel. If you enjoyed this video or you found it useful, I'd appreciate a click on the like button. If you find the channel useful, please consider subscribing. Please also click on the bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.